shake your booties for black girl nerds. Hi, Nico. How are you? Hey, Giandria. How are you? I'm excellent. How are you today? I'm good. I am doing wonderful. I'm doing wonderful. It's a good day. We we rocking and rolling. We sure are. Let me just say thank you for your character. Your character was just everything to me. Just so many layers of just genuine kindness, sweetness, protect, wanted to be protective, authentically living in their own truth, reminded me so much of a relative of mine. And so I was just so happy to see your portrayal of that character. Talk to me about the building of Uncle Clifford from those Mm -hmm. those early reading the script with Katori at her house, reading those (laughs) first five pages. To get it, she other- told you about that, huh? <laughs> yeah, I had to p- I had to pick it out of her into the version of Uncle Clifford that we see in the series. Oh, uh, it's been a beautiful and remarkable journey. To be honest with you, it is something that I don't take lightly. It is something that I appreciate. I think that when I think we all have people, if you are lucky, I won't say we all. Uh, but if you are are blessed enough to have an Uncle Clifford in your life, um, you are forever changed. And I remember as a child, to be honest with you, I had an Uncle Bill. He has uh, since transitioned um, and is in heaven. But Uncle Bill was a man, a chocolate man of bangles. You know, he had all these bracelets and he would just go. And it was just this thing of, who do you think you are? How can you be so authentically yourself and unapologetic? And that's a part of what I wanted to capture. I think everyone has like an Uncle Bill or an Aunt Ruth that they can identify with, you know, that may be more masculine or more feminine regardless, but they love you as you are. And because they love you for who you are, you love them for who they are. You know what I mean? So it was a, a, a intentional journey It was intentional to craft this character for the humanity that she has, you know, and just to see a beautiful black non-binary queer and say, and here she is, you know, you know, she is not a a woman of trans experience. She wants, she is happy with the, in in tune with the body that she is in, Mm -hmm. the fullness of it. I loved um, being dark skinned. In this moment, I love having all of the things that may have been in society, uh, uh, things that were insecurities maybe as a child, you know, having full lips, having a gap, um, thinking my ears were too big or whatever those things may be. I wanted to embrace all of those things. And I, I use that as the power for Uncle Clifford. Um, I would look at other non-binaries that I saw on social media and I wanted to know, I asked the question, what is behind all of the wigs? What is behind the regalia, you know, that armor, you know, and that level of truth that they're living in. And I wanted to be able to bring that into the home and to the stories with P Valley, you know, because people can do that when they have their own blogs and things like that. But I was like, I don't know that I've seen a full life like this expressed especially and specifically african-american southern culture Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know people listen to the music people love big frida you know and beyonce's uh uh, um oh my gosh uh formation formation you know i was Mm -hmm. about to break into choreography girl (laughs) (laughs) but But, you know you exactly yes (laughs) yes but do people really understand what she she goes through and in and, and, and the course of a day. So I wanted to bring that to the story. What I one of my tests of a new show, you know, full disclosure, I watch, I've seen the first four episodes and I watched okay. them all together um, just oh. to get ready for today. So I got very invested in the characters quickly and that's my test. If I can get through mm. to an episode and I can remember the character names without going back to look, Mm-hmm. Then I'm hooked into a series, and there are a lot of people in this series, <laughs> but 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 it worked, and I was able legitimately to remember every character name because everyone had 
there are moments, you know, some have mm. lots of dialogue, but some have very intentional moments that have less dialogue, but they were very meaningful in their time on the screen. Mm -hmm, working, mm -hmm. working in this type of uh, a collaboration, and like you said, Southern culture, Black Southern culture, Black Southern strip club culture. How will this help take that that stigma away? You know, when talking to Katori, she said, you know, growing up, it was nothing to go to the strip club. Very common. Right. You know, South, everyone yeah. goes from baby showers to birthdays to everything. So, how can this continue to help people viewing? people who work in strip clubs and dancers as regular people. They got to pay taxes and have an ID as we saw. Hello. 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 I think, uh, I think a lot of people think that they know about strip club culture when they actually have never been, um, or they've, they've seen some, um, uh, go, go girls, you know, on, on shows and the women in Southern strip club culture, it's not about go, go girls these are athletes, you know, these, these are pole dancing women. This is art. This is a transformation of, of minds. Mercedes says that actually in the first episode, she says, uh, she does say it's art. She transports folks. She transports you out of that darkness or that depression. And you think, oh, yo, and the, the, the hype is just like the same roar that happens at a football game or a basketball game that's happening at the last shot. It's like, oh, yo. You know, um, that excitement, I think, is, is contagious. I think when you get to see, because cinematically, the show takes you on the inside. You are not looking from the outside. You are coming into this club and into this world right along with Autumn Night, coming mm -hmm. right on in and figuring things out, seeing it. You get to see how difficult it can be for a person in this particular case, it's a woman, a black woman pulling herself up this pole, striving to get up and she's on the ceiling, laying out, bearing her soul. Boom, that's a metaphor, that's a moment. Take it what you will, but I know women who do that all the time, every day. My mother was a woman who did that every single day. And so to be able to see that reflected in this way and in this world, I thought was just bomb. I thought it was refreshing. I thought it was necessary. And I think that people, when you watch the show, all of the things that you assume that you knew about um, pole dancers, sex workers, and, and, and strip club culture, I think you, you'll be pleasantly surprised. And hopefully your heart will be arrested. You know what I'm saying? With your humanity. I don't know. I definitely was because, I mean, I'm from Los Angeles. I mean, strip club culture okay. is not foreign to me. My parents are from Louisiana. So, you know, I get it. But I found mm -hmm. myself learning a lot and just just the richness of the stories and just seeing the portrayal, not like past films where you have dancers where it just kind of scratches the surface that they might have other things going on outside of strip club. For a mm -hmm. lot of our characters, this is it. For some of the characters, there's something bigger. But at the crux of it is Uncle Clifford, who is that protector, that that heart, that that truth teller, that person who is is stable, probably the most stable person in a lot of their lives. What is mm -hmm. Uncle Clifford's journey going to be like over the course of the eight episodes? Ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> Now that's a that's a heavy question. I think that Uncle Clifford's journey, it's remarkable. It, it is, it, oh, it's not a fantasy. That's what I want to say. The journey that she goes on, it is not a fantasy. It is all real. I think that you you see Uncle Clifford in these trenches trying to do everything that she can to keep this club open and afloat, to, to keep her heart in a, in, in a uh, safe space, you know, to keep her family together or her family together because the employees, uh, the people that come in and out of the pink, they are a group of friends that are family. You know, I love, love the, the opportunity to have healthy relationships in this piece as a non-binary, person with heterosexual black men 
that was so it was so bomb right. and so important. I was like, that's right, because Big L, he is right there. He is doing it. You know, Diamond, he's been through some things. You'll find that out in the series. Watch it. And, and there's a reason why he is there. And, and you see it and you see people sometimes mess up with the pronoun. You see people and you hear people sometimes call Uncle Clifford maybe a derogatory term. But in the next breath, you see someone use the term that is appropriate that Uncle Clifford identifies with. There, there is a balance. There is not always, it's not this utopia that's, it's, it's just fictional. No, this is a, the, the show, P-Valley shows you a way that it can be. If we all just take the opportunity to be a little more compassionate with one another. Mm-hmm. Be lead more compassionate and lead with empathy. And that was a perfect yeah. segue to what I was going to say. It was refreshing to me to see cis het men mm-hmm. be non toxic towards yeah. people because I know I personally have men in my family who are heterosexual men who don't have that animus for the, mm-hmm. the LGBTQ community. And that's yeah. never spotlighted. It's like, the extremes mm-hmm. of like when black people are depicted when it comes to crime or interactions with the police, it's like all men are just super, excuse me, homophobic people mm-hmm. who right. are violent. I mean, disproportionately, that does happen a lot and not to it does sunlight on that. But I was <clears throat> happy to see that in the hopes that <clears throat> there are men out there who don't have that implicit bias towards mm-hmm. queer people who are like, yes. It's good yeah. to see these men interact and it not be in it. And I'm still myself, <clears throat> excuse me, myself okay. and their, their, and their, their selves. How important mm-hmm. was it to build that component into the show? I think that was extremely important to be able to see that and, and to, to, to feel it. You know, when you talk about um, in the, the lexicon of, of stories that are told, of course, of course, course and unfortunately there are those scenarios where there is indeed homophobia there is indeed people who have that toxic behavior um, towards people in the lgbtq community but just like when we talk about visibility making a change and, and being a part of of the conversation if you never see if someone never sees that intersect of people where it's not toxic then how do they know that that exists? You know, as a gay man, that is a part of my existence. My cousins, hardcore. You, you don't want to mess with them. You don't want to mess with them. You understand what I mean? And they were ride or die for me ever since I was a kid. You know, uh, even in talking about the world or them seeing pictures, you know, of me as Uncle Clifford. They're like, oh, yo, Nico, that's been you since you was a kid. You know, you... You, you do you cause you know what I'm saying this is everything I love and and that kind of acceptance is it, it, it's everything it's an evolution it is an evolution you know I I think that sometimes black men are demonized as if they have not made some progressions as well um, black women to me in my opinion have always been loving they love everybody. You know, they have been mothers for so many and uh, of other races and everything. When you even go back to slavery, it, I got to do this and my own child. You know what I'm saying? How are you going to have one breast for your baby, but the other one you can't have for, you know, like, like it's a lot of toxic stuff that's going on here. And, and, and for people to, to love unashamed, with, with no shame, just, just to love each other. I think like that's just truly revenu- revolutionary to see in a show that you think is about a strip club. It's not about a strip club. That's just the place where it happens. That's right. You know what I'm saying? It is about all of these people. It is about their experiences. It's about seeing, you know, the, the, the uh, social unrest, community activism, all of that is a part of the story. The things that are happening right now with Black Lives Matter, mm-hmm. ironically, we shot this 2019. It's in the story. Mm-hmm. It's in the story, taking ownership, owning your own stuff, pulling yourself up by the bootstraps. That, that, that's what I know of my people. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Grandma say you get it by hook or by crook. Do what you have to do, but you will not just lay here <laughs> and roll over. Mm-hmm. You got to do something with that. Awesome. Yeah. 
That's right. It, look, you know, the, the ladies and the other characters are so diverse and I just kind of did a little mind swap, like, hmm, what if this person played this character? What if this person okay. played this character? If you could swap with any character in the show, who would you want to swap with? Oh, 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 that's a great question. Mm -hmm. Ooh, I probably, I'm going to say if I could, I would, <laughs> everybody's going to laugh. I would probably swap with Autumn Knight. I That's not laughable. That's a, a a very layered character also. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. And just wait. Just wait. You do not, just, what you will learn when you watch Be Valley is that the next Black woman or queer person that you see, you will not judge by the cover. You cannot judge a book by the cover. Mm -hmm. Do There's not a, underestimate a pretty black woman. Never, 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 <laughs> never, never. You know, and then at the crux of it, and I don't think this is a uh, giving away too much of it is there's some gentrification, some some mm -hmm. property things that are at play down there in Mississippi. They want to make some changes to the local P Valley down there. When you fold that in with these women trying to make it and, and people live their truth and people overcome their, their circumstances. How does the, the gentrification of the area even play? Cause it's a, it's like a Bible belt community where yes. Pea Valley is center, correct? Correct. It is. And, and yeah. they're just trying to wipe it out. So how does that play into the storyline? Uh, I, I think that, you know, you, you mentioned the word erased. Mm -hmm. Um, and that is actually that 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 viewpoint is actually used in the show. So it's it was it took me a little bit to an emotional place back to that moment. But I think that it you have to to see people and communities for who they are. Everyone does not want to be like you. Everyone does not want to quote unquote assimilate and and become this. There are people. In, in this in that town of Chuckalisa, which means hope, you know, mm -hmm. it, it may look a little desolate during the day and come alive at nighttime. Um, but in the daytime, there's other work to be done. There's other things happening. Um, so I think that there's nothing wrong with offering people um, a different way or another experience, but you can't make that choice for them. You can offer and when things are accepted, or not, you know, then you can move on. So I think that the gentrification is, is all about the, I don't want to give it all away, but I, these are people who are not lying down and being bulldozed over. Mm -hmm. And you last, know? and lastly, I asked the ladies, you know, people think, oh, it's a show about strippers. Give them some bras and panties. They'll be ready in like five minutes in the wardrobe department. <laughs> people tell me how long it took them to get ready. Uncle Clipper got a whole extravaganza every yeah. time on camera. How long did it take you to get ready for shooting every day? Honestly, it took me maybe about, uh, I want to say 45 to, oh. yeah, 45 to at the most, at the most would be like an hour and a half, like for, so for some of my hair. Mm -hmm. Um, but Arlene, she was on my hair and I had that, we, we, we all had a plan. There, like there was a plan of action and, and Kara Thomas, my makeup artist, you know, we were very intentional on not doing drag makeup. You know, mm -hmm. I just wanted pretty black girl makeup, just like yours is right now. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? You're welcome. I just wanted to highlight like, you know, different parts of, of Uncle Clifford's face and the beard and, the, and that grooming. That was, a, that was all a part of it as well. So like, because I would have my beard done and, and stuff, I would, you know, maintain. So I, I made it for myself so that when I got to set, it was kind of like, doo, 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 doo. It, it kind of like moved like clockwork because I knew how long I would be in it, <laughs> you know, for the, the 14 or whatever hours of the day. I wanted to make sure that it wasn't too arduous at the beginning. So, but it was hard, you know, because you want to make sure certain things are covered, things don't fall out when they don't need to, and <laughs> you, <laughs> you want to you wanna be right. And, you know, you, you have to massage those feet and take your ibuprofen because those heels, 14 hours is serious, you know. Nice. 
One of my <laughs> friends told me once it's ice. If you yeah. soak your feet every day in ice, they get used to the, the how strenuous that is. So when you get ready to put the heels on, it's like, oh, my feet are already numb. So, hey, yeah, yeah you yeah, might yeah. as well keep it going because Uncle Clifford has some looks. Listen, that was that was so intentional. Every look that Uncle Clifford has is actually an homage to a black woman. So whether it was my mother or whether it was Lena Horne, whether it was Kelly Rowland, whether it was Shaka Khan, you know, I, I, I was like, I, let, this is this is the archetype. This is what we're going for. Um, there was some in the very first look. This is an insider. The very first look for me. Yes, it was more so it wasn't even the women. It was about what they used to call pansies, you know, like Prince, Rick James, Parliament. That mm -hmm. was where that look came from for me. So I wanted to I wanted to start there and then go deeper into it. All right. Well, thank you so much. I enjoyed you so, so much. I enjoyed your thank character, you. your performance. Really, really good. I can't wait to see the next four episodes. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you for your heart. I appreciate mm -hmm. that. I, That's no a part of the change. Don't 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 shy on that. Don't shy on that. All right. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Right. Bye-bye. Black girl nerds. Better shake your booties for black.